Good morning. Good morning. A rowdy crowd this morning. It's good to see you. Good to hear your voices. And now we are going to ask you to quiet your hearts because this is the day that the Lord has made. So let us rejoice and be glad in it. Let us worship God.
Let us worship God. Sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord. The voice of the Lord is over the waters. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves. In humility and faith, let us confess our sins to God. God of glory, we confess that we have not sought your face.
Hear the good news. Who is in a position to condemn? Only Christ. And Christ died for us. Christ rose for us. Christ reigns for us. Christ intercedes for us. Anyone who is in Christ is a new creation. The old life has gone. A new life has begun. Friends, believe the good news of the gospel. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Since God in Christ has forgiven us, let us also forgive one another. The peace of Christ be with you. Welcome to Westminster. We're so happy to have you here to worship with us on this beautiful Lord's Day. Uh, we ask you to please join us in our ritual of friendship by signing and passing the friendship pads, which are located on the center aisle end of your pew. Uh, note the names of people you may not know yet, so following the service you can greet them, say hello, you know the deal. Uh, if you feel like Westminster is the place where you would like to live out your discipleship, we invite you at the close of worship to head into the chapel through the double doors on your right where a member will greet you and answer any questions you may have about the life and witness of Westminster. Uh, there will be a therapist-led divorce adjustment group that will begin meeting on January 24th. Please call the office if you're interested and would like some more information about this group. For those of you interested in learning more about the Reformation study trip to Germany next fall, a meeting will be held in the chapel at 12.15 p.m. immediately following the congregational meeting. Speaking of which, I now invite Donovan over here for a brief word about today's congregational meeting. All right. Good morning. Um, I'm going to call our congregational meeting together right now because uh, you're all here and you look like more than 200. So uh, <laughs> we're going to call it to get in order. Uh, we do have a quorum. I'm going to have our uh, worship be our opening prayer. And please don't go anywhere for the close of worship because we have a special motion coming from our associate pastor nominating committee. So let us continue our worship.
Lord be with you. Let us pray. Prepare our hearts, O God, to accept your word. Silence in us any voice but your own, that in hearing we may also obey your will. Through Jesus Christ our Savior. Amen. The first reading today comes from Isaiah chapter 42, verses 1 through 9. Hear the word of God. Here is my servant, whom I uphold, my chosen, and whom my soul delights. I have put my spirit upon him, who will bring forth justice to the nations. He will not cry or lift up his voice, or make it heard in the street. A bruised reed he will not break, and a dimly burning wick he will not quench. He will faithfully bring forth justice. He will not grow faint or be crushed until he has established justice in the earth, and the coastlands wait for his teaching. Thus says God the Lord, who created the heavens and stretched them out, who spread out the earth and what comes from it, who gives breath to the people upon it, and spirit to those who walk in it. I am the Lord. I have called you in righteousness. I have taken you by the hand and kept you. I have given you as a covenant to the people, a light to the nations, to open the eyes that are blind, to bring out the prisoners from the dungeon, from the prison those who sit in darkness. I am the Lord, that is my name. My glory I give to no other, nor my praise to idols. See, the former things have come to pass, and new things I now declare. Before they spring forth, I tell you of them. The word of the Lord. from the Gospel of Matthew, the third chapter, verses 13 through 17. Hear the word of God. Then Jesus came from Galilee to John at the Jordan to be baptized by him. John would have prevented him, saying, I need to be baptized by you, and do you come to me? But Jesus answered him, Let it be now, for it is proper for us in this way to fulfill all righteousness. And then he consented. And when Jesus had been baptized, just as he came up from the water, suddenly the heavens were opened to him, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and alighting on him. And a voice from heaven said, This is my Son, the Beloved, with whom I am well pleased. This is the word of the Lord. Well, there are things in life in which we are all in. Are there any Alabama fans in here? I see a few hands, roll tide, some of them, most of them, all of them are all into that roll tide. Good Lord. (laughs) I'm sorry, Alabama fans, relax, I don't need you to get your feelings hurt. 
We all get into our emotions. Sometimes we're mad, sometimes we're glad, sometimes we're sad, sometimes all in love. Just last night in this sanctuary, we had a young man and woman stand here and say that they would love each other in plenty and in want, in joy and in sorrow, in sickness and in health, throughout all their days, all in, all in. Even though they know, know what those days are going to be like, they're all in for love. And I'm reminded of the widow who stood just out there, meeting faces upon faces, giving them, giving her condolences. And she standing, what, 50 yards, maybe less than that, and 65 years away from the place where she stood and said those vows. And the tears in her eyes said she was all in. All in. All in is where you are when a baby is born. When that baby is born, it just moves the furniture out of your heart. Suddenly, it's all about the kid. Your child is all you can see. Next thing, you're filling out application forms, going over essays, making sure the references are top-notch, using your connections to get that kid into the right school. Because if she's not in the right preschool, her life is going to be ruined. <laughs> All in. It's when you want a baby and you can't. All you think about, all you hope for, all the sadness, all the frustration of it all, all in. All in can be work. You work, 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 work. You took the risk to start the business. Where's the next sale coming from? Can we meet payroll? All in will be that worry that keeps you chewing your fingernails in the daytime and staring at the ceiling at night. All in. Surely, surely you must have something in your life for which you're all in. And maybe it's just life. Are we not all in to just surviving in this world? I'm always trying to figure out how do I make it through my life? How do I, how do I just keep going? I, I, I've, I've got a college of semester yet, a, a semester to pay for yet. I've got a car that's 17 years old, a classic, and it may be a classic disaster. Who knows? Will the air conditioner work for another year? Then there's politics and the stock market and mom. There's always mom, mom. There are relationships that I need to work on. There are relationships where I, whatever happened to you, where, where are they? I'm all into my health. I've got this funny thing going on with my knee. I feel it when I go up the steps. What's that about? All in. I'm all in trying to keep this ship afloat, trying to keep all you passengers happy, and that isn't easy. <laughs> you all have opinions over everything, theology and politics and paint colors. There's no coffee this morning, I know. I know. It's too hot. It's too cold. Look, I remember the woman in my church. <laughs> she came, it was like March or April, and she came in with a white turtleneck sweater, and she's 50 years old, and she said, why is it always hot in here? <laughs> I don't know. I'll work on that. <laughs> Just once, I would love for somebody in the sanctuary to say, you know what? The temperature in here is perfect. <laughs> all in. We got all this stuff. You have it too. All the plates you're spinning, all the things you're trying to keep up juggling, you're all in. What is it that you're all in for? Have I got your anxiety up? <laughs> That's life. Now let me ask you a question. Do you think that God wants us to be anxious about life? Well, hmm. You know, John the Baptist wants us to be anxious about life. You can just feel it in what he says. He's real good at it. Kind of telling us that we weren't all measuring up. John the Baptist was out in the wilderness and he'd tell his congregation, You brood of vipers, who told you to flee from the wrath to come? I'd like to say that to you sometimes, but I don't. <laughs> I get paid. Thank you. 
John never got paid. Ate grasshoppers and honey. I don't like that diet, so I treat you really well, okay? But John, he just let it fly. Don't think that you can claim Abraham. I can, God can raise these stones up to be children of Abraham. He just let the congregation have it as if they were not measuring up. He even said, I'm not worthy. The one who is to come, I can't even carry his shoes. But then one day God showed up. And God showed up in the one called Jesus. And you get the sense that John was a little bit surprised by the way he showed up. I, I shouldn't be baptizing you. You should be baptizing me. You're better than I am. There's a hierarchy here. I'm not worthy. What John didn't realize with Jesus was that though Jesus was in the form of God, he did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited. But he emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, being in the form of a human likeness and being found in human form, he humbled himself, he humbled himself, he humbled himself so small, so quiet, a bruised reed he will not break. A dimly burning wick he will not quench. He will faithfully bring forth justice. No, John, you baptize me. He humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death death on a cross. Do you understand that Jesus is all into life, but not securing his life? He is in, all into your life. He's all into my life. At his, bapti at his baptism, Jesus is reflecting the very heart of God, that God is in it all for us. Jesus came to the water, and he didn't dip a toe into the water. He didn't go into his ankle deep. He didn't go waist deep. He went all in, loving all people, all people. For no sin is too great for his love. Do you hear that? And you know how the story goes. That love, for all people, ends up getting him killed. Death on a cross. I read somewhere this week that Christianity is the number one persecuted religion in the world. And I read that and I thought, this is news? The symbol of the church is a cross. It is a sign that we are all in to suffering and dying, not that we choose it. But love just leads to it. Loving all people, redeeming all people, having mercy for all people, having grace for all people, it ends in a cross every time. Look, we live in a world right now where it is right and proper to choose sides, to get on one side or the other. We're either for it or we're against it. But our Lord, if you read your scriptures, always knocking down the walls, always bridging the water, always going across the borders. Just when you think you got God on your side, you get surprised. Lord, I think that perfume that she just broke over your head, I, I think that would be better used for the poor, right? No! <laughs> what? She has done a beautiful thing for me. The poor you'll always have with you. But she has anointed me for my burial. Just when you think you have God pinned down, keep those children away, we're having church here, we don't want these children, and no, let the children come unto me. And do not hinder him. 
We always get it wrong. Just when we think we got hold of Jesus, it's like soap in a bathtub. Man, you see, the point of our faith is that we're all in for the salvation of all things. We are all into the redemption of all things. And when you're into the redemption of all things, the salvation of all things, you're going to get a cross. Last Saturday, I was in Memphis dropping my daughter off for Rhodes, and we spent a night in a hotel, but went over to see the Civil Rights Museum in Memphis, which is right there at the Lorraine Motel where Martin Luther King was shot. They just renovated it, and if you haven't been there, you need to go. I, I'm ready to drive a bus and get everybody there because it is one powerful museum. It, it, its power comes from the fact that we are run by money and we will sell our integrity and our faith in order to make, make money off of people. And the first room in that museum was an art collection of photographs, of beautiful, beautiful, artistically done photographs of people who are currently slaves in this world. People in Nepal uh, m making bricks, covered in red dirt. People in Africa digging for gold and diamonds. People in, in, in Asia just sitting down at sewing machines making clothes for us. And you see their humanity. Wow. Well, you stand up for human rights in this world, it'll get you killed. Because there's too much money for it's crazy. If you say something about people jumping the borders and you say, all right, if you don't want people coming over jumping the borders, quit employing them. They're the ones who are painting our houses. There. They're the ones who are mowing our grass. They're the ones who are building our houses. They're the ones who are harvesting our vegetables. You can't have it both ways. Either the jobs have got to stop and close the borders, or we got to figure out how to love these people, all people. Well, just saying that, that'll get you killed, won't it? But the, the love of God goes to both sides. It goes to the slave, and it goes to the one who's doing all he can to enslave people. You remember Amazing Grace, how sweet the sound? That was written by someone who found God, who was, who was involved in the slave trade. You don't write people off just because they look like Pharisees or they, or, or they look like tax collectors. You don't write anybody off. That's the power of the love of God, that God is all in into redeeming all things. Now, I don't want to give you a lot of anxiety, but our waters of baptism, I don't know. If I look at my life, I think, how much have I been all in for the waters of my baptism? I may have dipped a toe in. When you look at my whole life, But that's where God is in, all in with grace and mercy. Lord, help us. But I still believe that if you, if you allow the Spirit to come in, that you can hear the voice of God calling you to be all in, somewhere, at some time, at some moment. Think this week, think today, tomorrow, this week, this month. Think about someone for whom you can go all in with the waters of your baptism. Maybe someone with whom you've been estranged. Can you go there? Can you pick up the cross and go there? Maybe someone with whom you have to forgive because you have been forgiven. Maybe someone with whom 
You just need to give a listening ear. Just let them talk. Go all in. Sit there. Maybe cry with those who cry. Laugh with those who laugh. Just be all in with someone, somewhere. Be all in. And when you go all in in your baptism, I guarantee you, the waters will rumble. And the Spirit will come down. And the voice of God will say, this is my child with whom I am well pleased. All in. With the whole church, let us stand and confess our faith using the words on page 3 of your bulletin. Do you believe in God, the Father Almighty? Do you believe in Jesus Christ? in the Holy Spirit. Lift up your hearts. Let us bring the needs of the church, the world, and all in need to God's loving care. When you hear me say, Lord, in your mercy, please respond with, hear our prayer. Let us pray. God of heaven and earth, through Jesus Christ, you promise to hear us when we pray to you in his name. Confident in your love and mercy, we offer our prayer. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Empower the church throughout the world in its life and witness. Break down the barriers that divide, 
that united in your truth and love, the church may confess your name, share one baptism, sit together at one table, and serve you in one common ministry. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Guide the rules of the nations. Move them to set aside their fear, greed, and vain ambition, and bow to your sovereign rule. Inspire them to strive for peace and justice, that all your children may dwell secure, free of war and injustice. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Hear the cries of the world's hungry and suffering. Give us, who consume most of the earth's resources, the will to reorder our lives, that all may have their rightful share of the food, medical care, and shelter, so have the necessities of a life of dignity. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Restore among us a love of the earth you created for our home. Help us put an end to ravishing its land, air, and waters, and give us a respect for all your creatures, that living in harmony with everything you have made, your whole creation may resound in an anthem of praise to your glorious name. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Renew our nation in the ways of justice and peace. Guide those who make and administer our laws to build a society based on trust and respect. Erase prejudices that oppress, free us from crime and violence, guard us from the perils of harmful drugs and materialism. Give all citizens a new vision of, lo- of a life of harmony. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Strengthen this congregation in its work and worship. Fill our hearts with your self-giving love, that our voices may speak your praise, and our lives may conform to the image of your Son. Nourish us with your word and sacraments, that we may faithfully minister in your name, and witness your love and grace for all the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Look to compassion on all who suffer. Support with your love those with incurable and stigmatized diseases, those unjustly imprisoned, those denied dignity, those who live without hope, those who are homeless, and those who are abandoned. As you have moved toward us in love, so lead us to be present with them in their suffering in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Sustain those among us who need your healing touch, particularly the injured, the witnesses, and the families of the victims of the Florida airport shooting. Comfort those who mourn, Make the sick whole and give hope to the dying. Uphold all who suffer in body or mind, not only those we know and love, but also those known only to you, that they may know the peace and joy of your supporting care. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. With thanksgiving, we remember before you those saints who bore witness to the light. Grant that we may preserve in the faith to which we have been called, and at the end, behold your glory. O Lord, in your loving purpose, answer our prayers and fulfill our hopes. In all things for which we pray, give us the will to seek to bring them about for the sake of Jesus Christ. Amen. Do good and share what you have, for such sacrifices are pleasing to God.
Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. We thank you for all the blessings of this life. But most of all, for your amazing love. We offer these gifts to you and ask that you will guide their needs. So that through the good of this money we will do, we may serve you today and every day. Amen. Our Father. you captive here for a moment so if you would all have a seat for our congregational meeting this should be a great day in the life of the church uh, we have a report from our associate pastor nominating committee who should be coming up shortly now and uh, Blake are you gonna start us off Sharon. Sharon, thank you hello 
I'm Jaron Springer. I'm a co-chair along with Blake Brookshire of the Associate Pastor Nominating Committee. And it's such an honor that you've allowed us to be a part of that process. And some of our nominating committee uh, is going to be joining us as well here. Uh, this is today the culmination of almost a two-year process uh, that started in February of 2015 with actually a uh, job description task force. There was a need for a job descri description task force for, for this position because of the visioning process that took place ahead of that, which determined a need for an associate pastor um, in a new way. And the associate pastor for young adults uh, has come from that. And so I, I would like to recognize also the, the task force, the job description task force members who were Terry Allen and Aline Pott, who were the session members, Scott Carey, Emily Cornish, Sidney DeWitt, Ben Folk, Chris Sheridan, Catherine Smith, myself, and Lynn Trost. Uh, we met in February 2015, met on towards May of 2015, determining that new job description that was uh, inspired by that visioning process. Once that was determined, we brought that to the pastor nominating committee that was selected over the summer, and the first meeting of this nominating committee was in August 2015. Um, at that point, we took that job description, created a ministry information form, which is the Presbytery's way of saying job description, and we, uh, at that point, put that out to, uh, through a number of different systems and ways for a national search for this associate pastor. At that point, we started to receive personal information forms. That's the Presbytery's way of saying resumes. And we received those back from pastors across the country. I would say that it was uh, uh, over 125 of those we combed through and read and looked through and then made determinations of who we would have phone interviews with. And, uh, and we conducted phone interviews, uh, conducted in-person interviews with individuals in their hometowns as well as here in Nashville. And that took place over the coming months following that. I would like to recognize the Associate Pastor Nominating Committee. I thought they were going to be up here, but Blake is a co-chair, Blake Brookshire, Andy Frederick, Emily Cornish, Linda Kuhn, Amanda Watley, and Wade Rick. I think I've got them all. This is the Pastor Nominating Committee. And um, just a few months ago, we were able to reach out and, and make a phone call to uh, Rachel Pence, who will be the, uh, the nomination that we bring forth to you today very enthusiastically uh, for that to fill that position of associate pastor of uh, young adults. And so now I'm going to hand it over to Blake, and he is going to talk a little bit about Rachel. All right. I'll tell you a little bit about Rachel. She is a uh, self-starter and a servant of the church. Um, she's seminary trained and is uh, someone who her, her ministry is to the emerging generations of the church. Uh, she's a Floridian and has retained membership with Riverside Presbyterian Church of Jacksonville, which is a church of similar size to Westminster. She's a person with remarkable energy for life. She has a truly honorable work ethic, while most recently serving the Presbytery of Charlotte uh, as liaison to their committees on ministry and committee on preparation for ministry, she found she had extra time and interest to contribute to the Presbytery's visioning effort and has been lauded by the executive presbyter as someone who's a champion for the interests of young adults. Still having more free time, Rachel volunteered her time at Myers Park Presbyterian Church to support their ministry for emerging generations. Remarkably, in what's left of her free time, she writes sermons in her free time and describes her inventory as an arsenal of sermons. <laughs> Mine's more of a squirt gun, but yeah, I guess. <laughs> Rachel has charisma. She's a listener. She's adaptable, which will be handy since she might not have an office when she comes here. <laughs> Uh, she's creative, she's willing to take calculated risks, she has a heart for service. Rachel's salary, her housing, her FICA, and continuing education and board of pensions is set at $77,560.
She'll receive four weeks of vacation, two weeks of continuing education, and two weeks to serve the greater church. Over the last four months, or four months, several months, <laughs> our committee has interviewed many qualified candidates, many who conveyed their love for the church, some of whom would love to work at Westminster, some of whom would just like to move to Nashville. <laughs> but Rachel loves this ministry. She wants to be a minister to the emerging generations of the church. It's her calling. And we believe God is moving to make this happen. Rachel tells the story of talking with her friends regarding her sense of calling and recalls how they said, you know this kind of work is out there. There are people looking for young adult pastors. I think Westminster is looking. So I think what I'm trying to tell you is our committee believes that Rachel will seek to serve the congregation with energy, intelligence, imagination, and love. So our committee enthusiastically recommends to you the nomination of Rachel Pence as associate pastor for young adults and young families. That is a motion from the committee. Is there any discussion? Family? Mary? Family? Or in what seminary did she go to? She went to San Francisco Theological Seminary, and she has... Uh, her father is an ex-army man and is, a, is an accountant, and her dad is a, um, her, her, her mom is, I can't remember, but she's not married. Um, she's a basket weaver. That's right. She's an interesting Her story. mother was a basket weaver, and her father was an army guy. So uh, <laughs> that should be both sides of everybody, I think. Also, <laughs> no, I didn't make that up. <laughs> She has some great stories. Uh, and, uh, yeah, anyway, never mind. She, she's not married, but, uh, yeah. So, uh, any discuss? yeah, come on. news from the committee on preparation for committee on Examination. examinations thank you thank you good news from the presbytery all right any more discussion ready to move the for vote is there a second? second all right all in favor say aye, aye. opposed motion carries unanimously thank you all for your wonderful hard work So uh, Rachel's going to be on payroll on January 15th, and so she's going to see your wonderful new office. Um, <laughs> try to make her happy if you can. Um, Presbytery, meeting. Presbytery meeting is what day, please? February 4th. She will come to the floor of Presbytery. She'll preach at Presbytery and be examined uh, on the floor of Presbytery which is a frightening thing to have happen to anyone. And so if you, you are welcome to uh, come to that presbytery meeting and uh, cheer her on, um, and then she will be one day installed. Uh, she's going to be ordained in her church down in Florida, but one day be installed here. Eileen, we good? The presbytery meeting is... First Murfreesboro. If it's not there, we're sorry. Okay? <laughs> Let us stand for the benediction. Now may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord be kind and gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen.